Hello everyone, welcome back to Daikin Cut. So right now, we will be taking a look at problem 5 of the IMO 2025. Now this is my favorite problem from the entire contest, and it features a game involving inequality. That already sounds interesting enough. So let's take a look at the problem statement. So the problem statement is as follows. Alice and Baza are playing the inequality game. Wow, what a name. A two-player game whose rules depend on a positive real number lambda, which is known to both players. On the m turn of the game, starting with n equals 1, the following happens. If n is odd, Alice chooses a non-negative real number xn, such that x1 plus dot dot plus xn less than or equal to lambda n. If n is even, Baza chooses a non-negative real number xn such that the sum of the xi squares is less than or equal to n. Whoever cannot choose a suitable xn, well, the game will end and the player loses, the other player wins. If the game goes on forever, neither player wins. All chosen numbers are known to both players. So we are supposed to determine all values of lambda for which Alice has a winning strategy and all values of lambda for which Baza has a winning strategy. Okay, problem statement is a bit long, so I've condensed it. Basically, the players take turn, starting with Alice. So Alice must pick a number such that it can still fit within this budget. Notice Alice's budget is up to lambda n. Then, uh, Baza's turn instead. Baza is supposed to pick a number as well on his turn. But for Baza, the budget is calculated up to n, but the budget involves the square of the numbers. So they will take turn, and we're supposed to see for different values of lambda, which values uh, is such that Alice has a winning strategy, which values is such that Baza has a winning strategy. So let's do some exploration. So one thing you immediately notice is that, well, the budget on the right side is different from for Alice and for Baza. If lambda is very small, it looks like Alice's budget will be very tight. So obviously, as uh, the turns go by, right, each person's budget will increase. But at least one is going to increase at a slower rate if lambda is very small. So it looks like if lambda is small, at least may have a hard time surviving. So how can Baza make use of this to make life difficult for Alice if lambda is small? Well, one idea is maybe Baza can even try and end the game very quickly. Baza might want to use all his budget on turn 2, put in as much as possible, and so that when Alice uh, receives the game in turn 3, this sum x1 plus x2 might already be bigger than 3 lambda. Then Alice straight away loses. Alice cannot pick an x3. So how might Baza do that? Basically, if Alice picks a, whatever a is on turn 1, notice that a will have to be less than or equal to lambda, because that's the budget Alice have on turn 1. Then Baza may try to put in the rest of his budget on turn 2. So basically, uh, you have a square here, the budget is, the total budget is 2, so his remaining budget is uh, 2 minus a square, then square rooted, because you pass the uh, x2 back to Alice, not the x2 square. So on Alice's turn, Alice will, turn 3, Alice will receive a plus square root 2 minus a square, if Baza was to do this. And you can quickly bound this, there's a minimum, which is uh, given by square root 2, you can obtain this in many ways, uh, I'll leave you to derive this inequality. So, it looks that if lambda is less than square root 2 over 3, at least immediately loses on turn 3, because x1 plus x2 is already greater than or equal to square root 2, which is bigger than 3 lambda. So, at least can't do anything, at least loses. Well, even if lambda is slightly bigger than this, and at least survives on turn 3, Baza may say, hey, let's do this again on turn 4 and then try and finish at least on turn 5. And indeed, we see that uh, Baza can try and do that again. Basically, uh, this time on turn 5, at least would receive 2 times square root 2. The first square root 2 from the x1 plus x2, then another of uh, greater than or equal to square root 2 for x3 and x4. So you get 2 square root 2. And if lambda is less than this thing, then 2 square root 2 is already more than 5 lambda. So Alice can't do anything on turn 5. Alice loses. So it looks like 
Vaza can keep doing this, continue to throw greater than or equal to square root 2 at at least every two turns. So it looks like if at least budget, the total budget increases at a rate that is less than square root 2 over 2, eventually at least will lose. Okay, this looks like a good uh, starting point. So in fact, we pretty much sketched out the solution already for the first half. Namely that if lambda is less than square root 2 over 2, then Baza has a win strategy. And the win strategy is as follows. On turn 2k, Baza simply plays square root of 2 minus uh, the square of whatever Alice just played. So we need to do a few things to check that uh, this works. So firstly, we note that on turn 2k plus 1, Alice's budget is at most this. So the total budget given is lambda times 2k plus 1. So this is the total budget. And then you subtract away uh, the what is accumulated in pairs. So for each pair, you you use the inequality that you shown earlier to show that each pair is going to be at least square root 2. So you subtract away k of that, that is at least remaining budget. And this you can rearrange to get uh, this expression. Basically, I collect the k together over here and notice that because lambda is less than square root 2 over 2, we are going to subtract away things from lambda. So this is less than equal lambda, less than square root 2, which is important because this shows that whatever Alice's budget is on turn 2k plus 1, she has a budget that's less than square root 2. So whatever she plays, Baza will always have budget to play on the next turn. In fact, Baza has this amount of budget left for uh, the x2k. And so Baza will never lose. And, and by playing this strategy, we also see that over time, uh, this quantity here is going to eat up all the lambda eventually. So when k gets large, at least eventually has negative budget. Okay, so we've done the first half of the problem. Now let's think about the other scenario. If lambda is large, it looks like things will be favorable for Alice in two ways. Firstly, because the total budget Alice have is going to grow at a very fast rate. Maybe it is the case that no matter how Baza tries, Alice may always have budget to survive. Well, and the other good thing is, if the budget gets very big, maybe Alice can even put in a gigantic xn on her turn and throw the even larger xn square back to Baza. So then Baza will be destroyed because Baza's budget is growing uh, at only a rate of n. So let's see uh, whether Alice can even guarantee survival by doing nothing. So by doing nothing, I mean submit zero. So one thing we want to check is, on turn 2k plus 1, can we guarantee that x2 plus lambda plus x2k would be less than or equal to Alice's total budget? So this will show that no, if Alice just keeps doing nothing, uh, submitting zero, no matter how Baza plays, uh, Baza's, whatever Baza throw at Alice is still within Alice's total budget. So Alice can continue to play zero. And indeed, there are a few ways to show this. I like to use uh, Koji swords, uh, but you can use the power mean inequality as well. So uh, basically, you want to bound this in terms of the square terms. So I use Koji swords here. Uh, so this less than or equal to the square 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 times one square plus one square plus dot plus one square and then square rooted. And this thing in the bracket is uh, bounded by the budget that Baza get, which is 2k. So this simplifies to square root 2 times k, which is obviously less than square root 2 over 2 times 2k plus 1. Because this part here, 2k plus 1 over 2 is bigger than k. So it looks like if uh, this lambda, this thing, lambda is bigger than square root 2 over 2, then uh, whatever Baza passes to Alice will be bounded by lambda 2k plus 1. Okay, now 
maybe Alice can even win because we haven't even looked at part two yet. But looking at part two will basically give us the solution already. So I'm going to now move on to the solution. So the solution, the second half, or rather the part two of that is that if lambda is bigger than square root two over two, then Alice has a winning strategy. So the winning strategy involves first keep playing zero for a while. A while. So let's see what happens if Alice keeps playing zero. On turn 2k plus 1, we use the inequality that we just showed to show that Alice will receive this sum less than or equal to square root 2 times k. So Alice's budget for that turn is the total budget lambda 2k plus 1 minus away whatever uh, Bazaar has thrown to Alice. Of course, this is uh, a bound and we can rearrange this by extracting out the k term and then we see that this is bigger than 0 because lambda is bigger than square root 2 over 2 here. So not only is this bigger than or equal to 0 which means Alice can continue to just play 0, the budget is going to grow with k because this is strictly positive. So once the budget grows so big that this term over here, which is here, at taking the square of that is bigger than 2k plus 2, then Alice can just play this expression over here to finish Bazaar. Because this thing, squared, is going to be thrown to Bazaar next and is bigger than 2k plus 2, then, oh, ggxx to Bazaar. And indeed, this k will eventually happen because the quadratic will grow faster than linear. Okay, so very interesting strategy. Alice just uh, controls, waits for the perfect time to finish off Bazaar. There's one more thing that you need to check, which is lambda equals to square root 2 over 2. Now, in this case, neither of them will have a winning strategy. So firstly, Bazaar has no winning strategy, or in other words, Alice cannot lose, because Alice can just keep playing 0. And as we had just saw, on turn 2k plus 1, Basically, Alice's budget is going to be at least this, which is greater than equal to zero, so Alice can keep on playing zero. So there cannot be a strategy that wins for Bazaar. And on the other hand, Alice has no win strategy, or in other words, Bazaar cannot lose by just forever playing a2k equals to square root of 2 minus what Alice just played squared. And this is basically the argument you've seen before also. On turn 2k plus 1, Alice's budget is bounded above by square root 2. So Bazaar always has budget on his turn to play this exact strategy. Well, so neither of them will have a winning strategy when lambda equals square root 2 over 2. And that's it for problem 5. I think this is a really interesting problem. We have inequality together with game and wow. I hope problem 6 is going to be as fun because it's a combinatorics problem. So stay tuned for the monster problem 6 and I'll see you soon.